want to, I, I feel I want to finish my sharing today. <clears throat> so that uh, what I will not have said, you can continue. You know, you are all preachers. Even last Sunday when I talked about the giant of loneliness, I know some of you had your own wonderful sermons. Go preach. Add your notes there. Go, go tell somebody else about the giant called loneliness. And this should be maybe the ninth lesson that we are lo doing, but it is going to be my last uh, so that we can move on into something else. The Gospel of Luke, chapter number 10, verse 19. Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verse number 19. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And I want you to underline the word enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Revelation 12 and verse number 11. Revelation 12 and verse number 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. I, I, I love this translation because this translation honors the devil, and they overcame him, the devil. They, it is put a capital, him. But they overcame him, the devil, by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. And there will be three points that we are going to pick from there as we bring our sharing to a close. If I were to ask you, who your greatest enemy is, what would you say? Or if I would ask, who is giving you the greatest headache? or amount of difficult right now, what would your answer be? And I don't, want, I don't want you to tell me. Because I know some of you, if you say it, we will laugh at you. Because that is not your enemy. You, you are just marakara on the wrong person. You are showing your anger on the wrong person. Our adversary the devil, facing the giant of our adversary, the devil. It is important to acknowledge Satan, not people, as our primary enemy. Even all the other points that we brought about, we, we, it, we were just singling them out. But the power behind all those giants is the devil. And if we can deal with our adversary, the devil, then we'll be blessed and it will be good for us. First Peter 5 and number 8, we did this when we were looking at the, the, the epistle of Peter, when we did the epistle of Peter, uh, First Peter and Second Peter. The Bible says, be sober. First of all, be sober. And I think I took a lot of time to explain what sober meant. Be vigilant after you are sober, then be vigilant. And the reason for you to be sober and to be vigilant is because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a rolling lion seeking whom he may devour. Yes, as a rolling lion, Satan seeks to take you just as he sought to take Christ or devour Christ. Psalms 22 and verse 13 they gapped upon me with their mouth as a ravening and a rolling lion. That's what they wanted to do to our Savior. So just as Satan tried to destroy Christ, he also attempts to destroy Christians today. He is on that business. This week as I was thinking about the rolling of a lion, and I pray that you, you pray for me. Lift your hands towards me. Pray for me. Museme, Bishop, kuwa digital. Please. Wengine wa museme ni kunicheke lea. 
You know, because this, this week as I prepared, I went to the territory of lions, but I did not know how to bring them here. And my daughter was busy this week. Because I discovered there is a roar a lion can make which makes even the animal he is after scared and stand still. Iyo wishindo tu, kanashindwa, kataenda wapi. Dunia yote inatatemeka. Kanakaa hivyo, kanagoja, kakuja, kaliwe tu, pole, 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 pole. And I want to declare to you the devil wants to do the same, the scare. He wants to roar. But I also discovered that there is another roar that when he roars, the, the small ones and the mothers are all asleep. Rolls in the morning. A sound he makes in the morning. Tuambia wengine, amkeni kumekucha. Nikapata ingine. When they are mating, kuna ka sound kengine. But I know the biggest problem to any other animal, whatever role it is, the other animals are scared, so they run for their life. And that is the point that I want to bring to you. The devil, whatever role it is, usisimame pale, utararuliwa. Atisimba wamekaa kwa lami, wamekaa kwa lami, na watu wamekuja na gari, na simba watoki, wanakaa, tunasaa kutoka, siwe utawambia watoke, haundi wanajiambia watoke, kwa hivyo wanamuka lezi litu, Ni kama tukusema tusiojaribu tu. Utadu. But the Bible tells us that animal or what it has, that animal called the devil, what it has is a roar. It can scare you. The phrase walketh about means to make use of every opportunity. The devil walketh about. He is looking for opportunities. He looks for an opportunity to attack us. So he's, he's not just walking, he is watching. He wants to see how he can attack us. Whether it will be lust or temptation or pride or those things that we dealt with, all what the devil does is to walk around so that he can seek how he's going to attack us. A number of things that I think will be critical for us is number one, know your enemy. Blessed is every man and every woman who knows their enemy. We must not give such an advantage over us regarding any matter. We should not. But we know that the real battle he is waging, he is waging against us. But let's not exhort him. In this church, and I thank God for you people, you nyin watu wazuri. Watu wazuri ni kwa sababu hawaingizagi shetani kwa church. Ati ya kiingia sasa tungekua kazi yetu kubwa ni kumkimbiza. You know, Deliverance Church started in a place called Karioko. Karioko Social Hall had two other small halls. We were in the big one. And I started going there in 1973. Na ni unaomba vijana wale wako na kamfuto. Ili utoke thika ukuja service. <laughs> In the next room there was a service. Na ilikuwa dini ingine. Na hiyo ni dini kari. Mara unasikia, hameonekana. Nani? Shetani. Ako wapi? Uko. Wanaanza kumkimbiza. Ngoma zinapigwa. Za kumkimbiza. Zinapigwa, zinapigwa, zinapigwa. Zinapigwa, zinapigwa. Zinaendelea zikupata moto. Zinapata moto. Zinapata moto. Kuna mtu wako kwa mlango. Zikipata moto sana. Anafungua mlango. Mara moja inaza. Rusua. Don't give the devil a chance. If you give him, atakuwa akiingia kwako asubui na jioni. Kwa hivyo every Sunday, walikuwa wakitoa yeye. Nasi kwa ibada zote. Anatoka tena anarudi. Wanamutoa tena. Anatoka anarudi. Kwa sababu, hawezi yenda. But I thank you people. Tungekua na maaskari pale kwa gate, kwa mlango pale. 
akina Obiero wangekuwa kwa pale na wanajua signal nikiwa hapa signal wanafungua mara moja pap alafu wanafungia swa alafu wanaingilia mahali pengine let's not give him what is not his did you get that second corinthians 2:10 to 11 says to whom he forgive anything i forgive also for if i forgive anything to whom i forgive it for you are six forgive i it for the person of christ lest satan should get an advantage over us for we are not ignorant of his devices we must understand that people are not the problem if this is what you believe then that people are the problem satan has diverted your attention of the real battle and onto a person may god help you and help me ephesians 6 and verse 2 of the bible tells us for we rest or not we don't do this with flesh and blood but again as principalities and powers that's what we are going we are doing we are attacking those in the heavenly places that's what we are doing no you are enemy jua shetani understand who he is ujua shetani ni nani first of all the devil the word the devil means accuser so when someone is accusing you no this man is not a problem but he has allowed the spirit of the devil who is my accuser the devil is an accuser rebuke the devil love your brother revelation 12:10 says that the devil is the accuser of the brethren that's what he does the word satan means adversary he is the enemy of god your enemy is the tempter he is continually focused on our demise he wants us he wants to make sure that we don't get into heaven he doesn't want us to have the crown of life he wants to bring us down he is the tempter he does not rest in his quest to destroy you matthew 4:3 communicates the story of jesus temptation in the wilderness his name is satan there He is also the angel of light. 2 Corinthians 11:14 b. Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. That's why sometimes it appears so real. Sometimes it is so you, you it, it it tempts you. And and we get tempted very very easily. Because the devil would appear like it is light in your nuru kabisa nuru yenyewe ndio hii so we need to know first of all who he is and then he is a murderer he is a liar he is the god of this age john 8 and verse 4 let's know him know him secondly understand what he can do you know when the devil comes to you know what he wants to do he wants to kill he wants to steal he wants to destroy He, that those are the things he want to do know what he wants to do understand what he can do so that you don't give him a hand he might cut it, he might chop it off because he's a strong enemy we must understand what he is capable of doing never underestimate him he is not compared to a lion and a dragon for no reason kwa sababu hata akiitwa simba ambaye hana meno akikugonga utaanguka ya tuseme hana meno kwa hivyo unaweza mpatia mkono aume na utasikia kitu todo kini kitiri magego but if that thing jumps on you to knock you down i i like the wazungus uh, do you live in kenya yes is your house on a tree hata ukisema yes atasema eh do you have puppies lion cubs ukisema ndio atasema ni sir can you bring me one ukisema unaweza mpelekea atagojea 
But I normally tell them, those things are not tamed. No, because he is strong, atakueka chini. No. No, that he is subtle, which means he is cunning, he is crafty, he has a strategy to bring you down. No, he is determined. Amesema atuendi. Nasitu nasema tutaenda. Satan will continually attack you. But I want to bring you some good news. One thing is for sure, he is defeated. Shetani ameshindwa. Na siyo kwa sawa tumesema ameshindwa, ati ameshindwa. Apana. Shetani ameshindwa. Na ni kukumbushe, buwana usikia maombi. I was thinking about that today. I have my own personal convictions. Ata bebe. Sidiyo. But there are people genuinely who prayed against reggae na hasla. Honestly, <laughs> they were neither for, they prayed against all of it. Now the problem is if you are a hustler, you don't like it. Hutaki hustler nation is Hindu. But you know there are people whose concern has nothing to do with that. Hustler, reggae, nothing. They are concerned about the people of this country. And the problem, they are not politicians even. Because some of us can tend to be politicians in a way. But these people have prayed. And some of them are in this church. May God bless you. Keep on praying for this nation. Na usikubali kuwa taken. Pray for this nation. Because this nation is better. And it is bigger than any one person and political party. Why I'm saying this is because Point number two with is critical for us. We need to know our commander. Who is your commander? Who is your commander? Joshua 5, 13 to 15. Joshua was looking over the city of Jericho, probably considering what strategy he might employ. Then he comes in contact with the one who is our commander in chief. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversary? So he said, No, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his feet to the earth and worshipped and said to him, what does my Lord say to his servant? And the captain or the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Take your sandal off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. Joshua was meeting the commander. He was not meeting an angel. Remember, this is the same commander that Moses met. And when Moses met him, he was told, Remove your shoes, because the place you are is holy. And my prayer is God is going to help us to know we have a commander so that we can remove our shoes before him so that he can give us the orders. Commander. Joshua learned he was not, he was not just going to see the idol. He learned that he was to be serving in the Lord's army. He was enrolled into it. He was not the commander anymore. Let's put our commands down so that the commander can take charge over the battle that is ahead of us. Abraham Lincoln was quoted as saying, Sir, my concern is not whether God is on our side. My greatest concern is to be on God's side. Always. Which side are you? I want to be on the Lord's side. Then we need to know our commander our commander. 
and not only know our commander, let's trust him. Hebrews 13 verse 5 he says, He had said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. We trust him. That's our commander. He is not only willing to fight the battle for us, he is also willing. He is also willing to fight the battle for us. Let's trust him. Let's trust our commander. Second Chronicles 32, 8. With him is an arm of flesh. But with us is the Lord our God to help us. And to fight our battles. And the people rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. Let's trust him. The arm of flesh for them. But for us, it's the Lord is with us. John 16 and verse 33. In the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. Why? I have overcome the world. Let's trust him. Are you tempted today? Let's trust him. He has a way of escape for us. Why do we trust him? We trust him because he is proven. He has done it in the past. Isaiah 43 verse 2, the Bible says, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. We can trust him. He has been proven in the past. He is powerful. He is not only proven, but he is also powerful. Psalms 145 verse 13. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endureth through all generations. We, we know he is powerful. And I might quote an illustration as I come to finish. Submit to him then. Not just to trust him because he has been proven and because he's powerful, but B, we can submit to him. If you trust him, then submission is no problem. Immediate submission is the training of soldiers. Never is that phrase more applicable than in the battlefield. When you hesitate to submit, you lose. Submission is key. You know, I, I used to, 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 to say my own things. I did not know that soldiers are told something. I used to say, hey, left, right. But you know, I discovered later, they are told things. They are told things. In Kizungu, But when I was growing, I knew, hey, left, right. You have to submit. You have to submit. You have to submit. You know that this is hey, and you know what I'm finding. So I discovered Nikizungu. Now I am in the battle. I will submit to him. I trust him. I will submit to him. The Bible tells me in James 4, verse 7. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you now. The power for him to flee is not in my resisting. The power for the devil to flee is in my submission. Because as I, as I submit, then I will stand strong. The devil will have to flee. Because he knows the battle is no longer mine. God is going to fight it for me. Victory over the devil comes only after submission to God. And that is key to us resisting him. We wacha ku resist na mwili. Utaanguka tu. Ati ni resist. Ni resist. Apana submit kwa mungu ili utoroke dhambi. Know your position. Know your position. Know your position. Second Timothy 2 verse 1. And jumping up to verse 3 and 4. You therefore my son be strong in the grace that is in Christ. Verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Verse 4. No man that weareth, weareth entangles himself with the affairs of this life. That he may please him. That he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. 
in Luke chapter 10 verse 19 where, where we had eluded it, says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Know your position. Do you know your position? They overcame him. They overcame him, the devil. They overcame him, the devil. And they did so by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, loving Jesus more than your life. Three things, and I will be done. Number one, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Blood of the Lamb. The blood that speaks better things than of cows and goats. The blood, the blood of Jesus Christ that redeems us. You can overcome by the blood of Jesus. You can overcome by the blood of Jesus. Oh, wonderful testimonies of what God has done by people that have pleaded the blood of Jesus upon their lives. A story is told of one Christian that used to live in a very good house and he was a well-up Christian in those early 60s. And thieves wanted to steal in his house. But every time they came to his house at night, the war had no end. They would not see the end of the war. So they wouldn't jump. Because every night this man of God would pray the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. He would plead the blood of Jesus over his house and family. And every night he did that. God will come at night, make a wall, make a hedge of protection upon him. But one day he forgot. And when the thieves were walking, now not stealing, they were just walking, they saw, eh? Now he's healing Yumba, yeah. So they jumped in and they went in, they, they, they get the man, they said, we are not coming to steal, we want to know. The la whole of last week, what were you doing? And he told them, I was pleading the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. We can plead the blood of Jesus because the blood of Jesus gives us victory, protects us, covers us. The blood of Jesus Christ. Yes, they overcame him, the devil, by the blood of the Lamb. Would you sprinkle the blood of Jesus upon your mind as you go to bed so that your mind is protected from the schemes of the devil. The blood. The blood of Jesus. A story is also told of one Christian who refused the Mau Mau oath and the Kikuyu, uh, Kiyama Kiyama and Shiyama Shia, whatever it is. He refused and one night they walk in so that they can kill him. So they go in to kill him. And then he, he, he tells them, you want my head? They said, yes. He said, then give me a minute. I tell the owner to take to, that you have come for the head. So this Christian lifts up his head and says, God, they have come for my head. Should I give it to them? When he opened his eyes, those guys were not there. Whatever had happened, had happened. Your head belongs to God, not to them. Plead the blood of Jesus. One Christian woman in Kangima for a long time, the husband was bringing men to circumcise her because she had refused and she was an old woman because of those kema, whatever it is. She loved the Lord. Her husband would go and tell the Mongeke and then he would go. But you see, every time they would go, they would meet that lady humbly in her self. But every time she would call the blood of Jesus, they would tremble and run for their life. I'm talking to someone here. What you need is courage in God. Oh, man. I was... Yes, you said even today. Speak about what God has done. You said... when you're in high school. Now, kuna shida na kathalika na kathalika. Huyo mungu hajabadilika. In actual fact, when do you know kama mbabadilika? If he gave you 10 shillings then, he can give you a million today. Because he's the same God. 
All what you need is a testimony. I know there is a God who provides. I know there is a God who opens the door. They overcame him by the word of their testimony. What testimony do you carry around? What testimony do you have? The Bible ends up by saying, and they did not love their life. They were ready for their lives to go. Hongo. You know, I was told a very interesting story. And I wambia, Sasa, tuko hapa kwa polisi, eh, mtu wanaonganaka sangapi. <laughs> Are you getting the point? What happens? What is, how can I sense the weather? You know some of you, that's, that's like that woman. Daddy, what should I, what will be the signal, the sign? Your life, your life, your life. A Nigerian man is caught in Nigeria in the Muslim world and he's asked all what they needed him to do is to denounce Christ and say Muhammad a couple of times. Confess a couple of times. He refused. He was ready to die for Christ. And the Bible records when they tried to kill him, he could not, you know, see you come Easy story sign Guinness in our Kana Peter Kamani Caesar Query. Atambaka unauliza query. Because to Nazisoma, you cock the gun, you shoot, nothing comes out. And then you look at the gun. See in Risasi. Now Kijaribu Pali Pengine in end at two. I have to know Unaeka Tena. In a kata kutoka. What do you think? Who jumps that? Who jumps it? It's God. Amen. They overcame him because they loved not their lives. Those are the matters. And some of you, I pray that you don't go through it. But if it comes, may you be willing to die but for Christ. We will overcome. We will overcome. To Tamshinda na tutamwambia imeandikwa. Kwa hiyo simkuje tumwambie tuambie hivyo imeandikwa. Millicent hiyo kawimbo unakakumbuka? Hapo kawimbo. He, tumwambie shetani imeandikwa. We are going to defeat him by the word of the Lord. Let's know our commander. For you at home, know your commander. Do you have a testimony of the victory of the Lord in the past? You said today have you ever pleaded over the blood of Jesus over your children? Do it today. Over your life. Because we are going to overcome the devil by the blood of Jesus. By our word of testimony. And if we don't love our bodies more than we love Jesus Christ. We love Jesus more than anything else. I want to ask all of you to stand if you can. In a little while we'll be trying to wind up our service. Oh, mnagojia wimbo. Eh, nilifikiria nitaokolea. Tutamwambia imeandikwa shetani tutamwambia. Tutamwambia shetani tutamwambia. Inaonekana hiyo wimbo hiyo wimbo hiyo wimbo ni moto wa kuotea mbali. Tutamfukuza kwa maombi shetani tutamfukuza tutamfukuza kwa 
tutamwambia imeandikwa shetani tutamwambia imeandikwa e tutamwambia imeandikwa shetani tutamwambia imeandikwa tutamfukuza mwaombi shetani tutamfukuza kwa Our gracious heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, where we are today, the devil has weakened our prayer life, the devil has threatened our prosperity, the devil has weakened our family leakage, the devil has entered into our nation and our leaders, but Father, from this altar, we resist him in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, I want to plead the blood of Jesus upon your people. And I pray, dear Father, that we shall use the blood as a weapon. I pray, dear Father, the blood of Jesus is a weapon upon your people. We declare that every one of us covered by the blood of Jesus will be victorious in this life, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I also pray for someone here who is going through some trials and tribulation and temptations. Heavenly Father, I pray that in the mind of that person, may you remind them of the great miracles that you have done in the past so that they can overcome the devil with the words of their testimonies, the things that you have done for them, the victory that you have brought in the past. I want to declare a week of testimonies that we will talk about the goodness of the Lord as we release a weapon against the devil and the weapon is the word of our testimony. Lord God, I pray that some of us are going through some trials. Lord God, it is in comparison. Do we love the Lord Jesus Christ or do we love our own bodies? Is it my wealth for today or am I going to anchor my future in Christ? And I pray, dear Father, that you're going to give us boldness that this will be a week where we say, if I suffer, let me suffer, but in the Lord. If I miss a job, let me miss it, but in the Lord. If I'm going to miss a contract, let me miss it, but in the Lord. If I'm stopped by a policeman and he wants some bread from me, I will not give. I better go to jail because I will resist any, any, any bribing in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I plead the blood of Jesus upon your people. Set your people free. Set your people free in the name of Jesus. There are some people, Heavenly Father, that are unwell. Some of them are in this building. If you are here and you're unwell, would you lift up your hand to Jesus? Father, as we lift up our hands to you, we are pleading the blood of Jesus. The blood that speaks better things that it will speak better things upon your people and declare them well, declare them healed, declare them prosperous in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, there are people here, oh, they are calling on the favor of the Lord. The door seems like they are all locked all over. They are looking for jobs, they can't find it. They are looking for business, they can't find it. And they are here. And if you're here, lift up your hand. And I want to pray for you. Heavenly Father, as we lift up our hands, we are declaring those doors that appeared locked yesterday, we are moving towards them tomorrow. And as we get closer, may they swing open in the mighty name of Jesus. Some men here, dear Father, are calling for destiny helpers. May the destiny helpers locate them tomorrow to help them navigate in this life. We plead the blood of Jesus and we call the deep caller to the deep that there's men and women who will be available to help your people. In this week, Heavenly Father, we shall defeat the devil because we know our commander, we know what our commander has. 
And dear Father, we are not going to be ignorant. But Father, we are going to submit ourselves and then be vigilant because then the devil will flee away. We said this week the devil is fleeing away. The devil of confusion in our homes is fleeing away in the name of Jesus. Oh, we give you honor and we give you praise. We know, dear Father, you have done it more than we have prayed for. And this will be a victorious week. Not because we have said it, but because, dear Father, you have declared it so in the word of God. And we appropriate the word of the Lord that you will never leave us nor forsake us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give the Lord praise in the house, shall we?